Abandoned Grace International School. We are located right in Obwase, precisely BDM. The school has a number of facilities that aid in learning. We have qualified and trained teachers who are ready and willing to assist the children. The school has many facilities such as the ICT laboratory. We also have a science laboratory. We also have a library. The school has a number of buses which convey the children from their various destinations to the school premises. We have the football team. We have the drama group. We have a lot. And the school is based on the Christian principles. For more inquiries, you can call this number 541 310 670772 Abandon Grace in God we trust. Hello, I'm glad in meeting you once again on home economics aspect of BDT. Now today we'll be moving a little bit of clothing aspect of home economics. That is our question demand us to learn how to prepare a sleeve and insert into a blouse. But before that, what is a sleeve? What is a sleeve? What is a sleeve? A sleeve is a part of a garment that is made to cover some or the entire arm. So when you say a sleeve, a sleeve is a part of a garment that is made to cover some or the entire part of the arm. So if you take a look at the shirt that I'm wearing, I'm having two sides of sleeve being displayed on the same shirt. I'm the shirt that I'm wearing sleeves is covering the whole of my arm, my entire arm, as you can see on your screen. On the other hand, it's covering some parts of my arm. That is what we term as a sleeve. So sleeves are part of garment that can cover some parts of your arm, or it can also be made to cover the entire part of your arm, as you can see the picture on your screen. So this, my hand sleeve is covering the whole of my arm, and then this sleeve is also covering some parts of my arm. That is what a sleeve is stem. Now, why do we insert sleeve in garment? Why do we insert sleeves in garment? Now, some of us choose to wear long sleeves when we are in the cold weather. Why? This is because we wear the long sleeve during the cold weather to keep our body warm. That is one function of inserting a sleeve into a garment. So when someone asks you, what are the function or the use or the reason why we insert sleeves in garment? One, we insert sleeves in garment to keep the body warm. Two, we also insert sleeves to add beauty of your garment. As you can see, it is enhancing the beauty of my dress. It is enhancing the beauty of my dress. So, another part or another reason why we insert sleeves is that they also make the dress that you are wearing formal. For example, if someone is wearing the long sleeves, that is to say most of the company workers, they use the long sleeve as their official dress. Others too, which is not official, they use the short or the, um, the thin sleeves to, uh, they use that one for their dress. So these are some of the functions of sleeve. We wear it to enhance our dress or to add more appearance to the garment that you are wearing. 
it also makes the dress that you are wearing formal, or that is to say, it makes it more official to wear for like uh, church services, and then most of the companies too, they use it for their dress code. Now, let's move on to types of sleeves. We have so many types of sleeves, so we are going to learn about the types of sleeves. So, by going through the types of sleeves, you'll be able to identify the types of sleeve on my right hand and then that of my left hand. So, one, we have kimono sleeve. As the picture is being displayed on your screen, that is the kimono sleeve. That is the kimono sleeve. We also have another type of sleeve. We have the raglan sleeve. We have the raglan sleeve. Let's go to another type of sleeve. We have bishop sleeve. As the name sounds, bishop sleeve. As the name sounds, bishop sleeve. We also have another type of sleeve. We have the set-in sleeve. We have the set-in sleeve. Setting sleeve as shoulder and continue around the armhole. That is how we insert the setting sleeve. It's being shown on your screen so you can see the ties of screen being set. The last one is flat or short sleeve. Flat or short sleeve. Mostly it's being used on the, um, the white shirt that you have been wearing. The short or the flat sleeve. That is on my... Uh, on my left hand, as you can see on my left hand, this is the flat or short sleeve. This is the flat or short sleeve. So now, we are going to learn about how to prepare a sleeve. How to prepare a sleeve. After preparing the sleeve, we also learn how to insert into a blouse or insert into a shirt. Okay. Okay. Now, this, the question said that we should prepare how to insert a sleeve and also learn how to cut it. No. So we are going to, they have given us um, options that we should, in, we should insert or we should put in the mixing dashes or where the dashes are. Now, the passage below is the preparation and setting in of a shirt sleeve in a blouse. Fill in the blank spaces with the following words. These are the words. Press, sleeve, head. Shoulder, stitch, ease in, knitting, rose, hem, underarm, right side. So this is how the question is being formed. Make two dash of garden stitches between the front and back sleeve, just above the seam line. Join the dash seam and knitting, full stop is there. Dash out seam, turn the dash of the sleeve. Find the center of the sleeve and mark on the dash. Insert the right side of the sleeve into the sleeve, into the armhole of the sleeve of the blouse with dash facing. Match the center of the sleeve to the dash seam and match the underarm seams. Pin dash by pulling the two rows of gathering stitches to fit into the armhole and tuck. Dash in position along the seam line and then in between the two rows of garden stitches. The last one is you trim and dash, trim and dash. So this is how the question is being formed. We are going to insert or fill in the blank spaces to fill or to cut our sleeve and also insert our sleeve into our blouse. So a video is going to be displayed on your screen. We are going to learn how to cut a sleeve and insert a sleeve in your blouse. So let's watch the video. Okay. Before you can cut a sleeve, before you can cut a sleeve, there are some measurements that you need to take before you can cut your sleeve. We are some tools to you, you need your measuring tape, you need your fabric, you need your pins, you also need your thread and needle. We are going to use the thread and needle because we don't have the sewing machine. But you are having access to your sewing machine, you can also use that with the same thing using the thread and needle and using the machine. At the end, you are going to get the same permanent stage being done. Okay. So bef before we start, we are going to learn how to cut a sleeve. Now, before you cut a sleeve, you need to measure the length from your shoulder to where you want your sleeve to be. 
For example, now that you know the types of sleeve, do you want the kimono, raglan, short, or sleeve, uh, short or flat? It depends on your likings. So let's take it that I want the short sleeve. So I will take the measurement from my shoulder to that of my elbow. That is to say, that is where I want my sleeve to end. So I'll first take the measurement from my shoulder and then I'll take it to where my elbow is and I'll take that measurement. You write it down. After taking the length of your shoulder, you also take the armhole measurement. The armhole is the hole where your hand penetrates or that's the where your hand goes through before you can wear your dress. So you also take the measurement for your armhole. So you are going to use these two measurements to cut your sleeve. Okay. Now, since you know the measurements from your shoulder to your elbow and that of your underarm, that is around your arm, you know these two measurements. You use these two measurements to cut the sleeve on your fabric. Okay. After cutting the, using the measurement to cut your fabric, you have two sides. You are going to have two sides of the fabric, right side and then left side. So you put them together and then you are going to tack using the temporal tack. And the, the reason why I'm saying the temporal because we cannot put on temporal stitch because it's meant for temporal. You are going to use it for the meantime. So I'm going to tack it using my pins. I'm going to tack it using my pins. So that is the temporal stitches. I'm tacking with my pins. You start from one edge to another. Make sure that the tacking, the temporal tacking is straight because after the temporal tacking, you are going to use a permanent stitch on it. So the permanent stitch depends on the temporal tacking. If the temporal tacking is not straight, you are not going to have a straight permanent stitch. And if your dresses are not straight, you know what is going to happen. So make sure you stitch or you use the temporal tacking very well, neat, so that your dress, af after the end, your dress is going to be well knitting. So this is how my temporal tacking is. You can see the pins I've used in. It's very straight. You have to make sure that it's very straight so that at the end, when you are using either a sewing machine or a, a thread and needle, your permanent stitch is going to be straight and neat. Okay, that is your temporal stitch on the fabric being shown to you on the screen. That is your temporal stitch being shown to you on your screen. Okay, so after you finish tacking, this is how the sleeve is going to be. This is how the sleeve is going to be, as you can see, a nice sleeve, a nice sleeve that you have on your screen. A nice sleeve, okay. That is a sleeve. So I hope you are trying some. If you are not, you also try to get some small fabrics and try your hand on the fabric or how to cut a sleeve and also insert a sleeve. So after using the pins on it, that's the temporal. Now that you know the terms, uh, the temporal stitches, we are going to use another sleeve. I have another sleeve to insert into a blouse. This is a well-made sleeve. This is a well-made sleeve. The other one is there. Another one is too easy. Now we are going to insert this sleeve in the blouse, as you can see on your screen. You are going to insert this sleeve. I hope by now you know the name of this sleeve. Very good. It's good. It's good. It's okay, so we are going to insert it into a sleeve. Now, before you insert a sleeve into a blouse, we always search for the center of the sleeve and then we match it to the head of the sleeve. We match it so that is the center of the sleeve that I've hold, and then on the shoulder head too, I found the center of the sleeve on the shoulder head. So I've insert, and then I'm going to pin using the temporal stitches. I'm going to pin using the temporal stitches. So that's what I'm doing, and then you can see it on your screen. I'm using the temporal stitches you, by the pins. I'm inserting the pins and then you can see on the screen. So you use your, your pins to insert. Make sure it goes round neatly. Make sure it goes round neatly. Now we are inserting the pins using the temporal one, as you can see on your screen. Make sure it goes round. You take your time. Line them up so that at the end, you are going to have 
your neat and straight stitch. Stitches are being straight to have a neat work. So if you want your dress after, after the end, if you want to get a neat work, make sure that all your stitches are in line. All your stitches are in line. So I'm using the pins to tack around the sleeve into the shoulder of the sleeve. As you can see on your screen, I am tacking now. Wow. Have you seen how we have inserted our sleeve into our blouse? A nice job there. So you can also try some. It's a very neat. You see, even with the pins, you cannot see any thread being left. Uh, uh, going out of the dress. So if you take your time and tag the pins with your needle or with your pins, you are going to have a neat work as you see on your screen. Now, we, we are going to use the thread and needle, but in your house or in your homes, if you are having the machine, the sewing machine, you can also use the sewing machine. So we are using the thread and needle. Now we are going to stitch along the pins where you've used the pins to tack we are going to stitch along the pins so make sure you take your time you stitch round and then that is how you can make your sleeve that is very wonderful job that is great so this is how we insert a sleeve into blouse you take your time you use your pins you tack around mind you Always use the safety pins to tack around the pins, the sewing pins. Always use that one to tack around so that at the end you are going to have a neat work. But if you don't always use the pins, at the end you are going to have a crooked uh, stage line. So if you always want to get a sleeve, always use the pins to tack around the sleeve before you use your machine or your thread and needle to stitch over it so this is how we insert your sleeve i hope you try some in your home try it because it's very easy and then i know i trust my viewers you can do it perfect so try some now let's move on to our next question that is to be our next question to be okay to be is being displayed on your screen the question demands us to find the reason why we take body measurement stay two reasons for taking body measurement when sewing a shirt before then what is measurement what is body measurement if you don't know what body measurement is how are you going to state a reason for not taking measurements before sewing a dress so let's look at the meaning or the definition for body measurement So when you say body measurement, body measurement is determining the exact size of a person to seal a dress with the help of tape measure. Body measurement is determining the size of a person to seal a dress with the help of tape measure. So for example, if a dressmaker wants to seal a dress for someone, they do so by, they do so by taking the measurement of the person you can only do so by with the help of what? Your tape, measuring tape or your tape measure. This is the measuring tape. This is the measuring tape. So you need your measuring tape before you can take measurement on someone. Before you can take measurement on someone. Why? Okay. Now, 
We are saying that we should state reason why there is a need for us to take measurement. Now that you know what body measurement means, why do you need why do you need that there is uh, there's the need for you to take body measurement? Why do we have to take measurement before we see a dress for someone? Okay, one. We do take body measurement to prevent waste of fabrics. How and why? Someone will say why. Why is that when you measure someone before taking or uh, sewing a dress, we prevent waste of fabrics? Is correct or is true? If you always take measurements of someone before sewing a dress for the person, it prevents you from cutting a uh, part of the fabric. That is to say, if a dressmaker do not take measurements of a person before going through um, or sewing a dress for the person, at the end, the person will end up being the dress will be either big or smaller than the uh, exact side of the person. So in order to prevent all these things, you have to take correct measurement on the person before you start to sew a dress for the person. The second point why we should take body measurement before sewing a dress is it helps to sew accurately. It helps to sew accurately. Yes. If I have the size of my length, let's say the um, the length from my shoulder to my knee is 30 centimeters or 30. And the dressmaker does not take measurement before seeing the dress for me. At the long run, it's either she is going to have more than 30 or less than 30. That is not accurate measurement. So if you want to see accurately, we should always take body measurement before seeing a dress for a person. Now, the last reason why we should take or we should measure someone before seeing a dress is it saves time, energy, and money. It saves time, energy, and money. Now, if I have correct measurement that I am looking on to see a dress for someone, I won't waste much time cutting parts of the dress that I do not need because I know the exact size that I am going to measure. It is going to save my energy. I'm not going to use a lot of energy strength in cutting the tools or in um, arranging the sizes that I want. So it saves our time, it saves our money, and then it saves our money. The money side is when um, the dress is, you, you are going to cut the dress and then you make a mistake. Whilst the fabric, you cannot use it again. You are going to spend another money in buying another fabric, which is going to cost you. So we do so by taking body measurement to avoid all these things that you are talking about. It helps you to see how clearly. It also helps you to um, prevent waste of fabrics and then to avoid wastage of fabrics too. It saves your money, it saves your energy, and it also saves your time. Now, our question C demands us to state three guidelines in taking body measurement. Guidelines in taking body measurement. What are some of the things that we should do? Or, or we should do when we are taking body measurement. What are some of the things that we should do when taking body measurement? Or points to consider when taking body measurement. Points to consider when taking body measurement. If you are taking body measurement, there are a lot that you need to consider. Uh, there are a lot of points that you need to consider before you, you can take body measurement. The first thing that you need to bear in mind that you should take record of any measurement that you are going to take. You should take record or you should put down the record measurement that you have been take on the person. So if you measure the person underarm and it is 10 centimeters, make sure that you write underarm 10 centimeters. If you took the, person the person's height and it is 30 centimeters, make sure you put down the 30 centimeters. Why? Because uh, whilst you are going through the measurement, you might misplace or you might exchange some parts of the body with different sizes of the measurement being taken. So if you want to get accurate measurement, you should always record whatever that you are taking, uh, whatever measurement that is being taken on the person. Last one, Re uh, the, next, the next point, point three. Remove any bulky outer clothing like cardigan. Remove any bulky outer clothing like cardigan. That is, uh, now when people are going to the dressmaker, 
for them to see we're dressed for them. They, they are already wearing their normal clothes, but you see them putting on additional clothes, which is not going to help the dressmaker to get the accurate measurement that they want. So if you want a dressmaker to get accurate measurement for you, you should remove any outer clothing, like the sweater and then the cardigan, so that your normal dress will get, so the, the dressmaker will use your normal dress for your normal measurement, and you also get the accurate measurement. Okay. The next guideline or the next point that you should consider when taking body measurement is do not pull the tape measure too tightly or loose. Do not pull the tape measure too tightly or loose. When you are taking measurement on someone, we do not tighten the tape measure too much. Why? Because if you tighten the um, tape measure on the person too much, at the end, you are not going to have the exact side that you want. So if you want to get an accurate measurement, always, you don't have to loosen it, but it should be at a medium of measuring. You should be at a medium of measuring, not too tight and not too loose, at a medium. Okay, now let's go to our last question for today. List five different types of material used for making garments. Use five different, list five different types of materials used for making garments. We have a lot of materials that we use for making our garments. And I'm going to display some of the pictures of these materials that we need in making our garment. Our garment is just when you are seeing a dress for someone. What are some of the things that you need? before you can see a dress for someone. One, you need a skirt band. That is for the ladies. You need a skirt band. And then the picture of the skirt band is being displayed on your screen. So take a look at the skirt band on your screen. It's of different colors. It's of different colors. So that is the skirt band. Now, we also have the shoulder pad. Shoulder pad. That part or that garment or part or feature of that garment is being put or the, uh, insert at the shoulder or in the top of a, a blouse on the shoulder part. So we insert the shoulder pad in blouses or in suits and those um, dresses that they need a little higher on the shoulder. This is the shoulder part. We also need our tread, tread of different colors. But with the tread, you should always pick a thread color that will match your dress. For example, let's take a look at the dress that I'm wearing. You see, it is white dress. So if I'm going to pick any color, like let's say a color like red, it is not going to match because um, the red color and then the white, when using the thread tissue, you are, the red is going to display itself too much on the dress. So make sure that the thread that you are using, you must consider the color of your fabric that you are going to use before you can you choose the type of thread. We have different, different colors of the thread, as you can see on your screen, as you can see on your screen. Now let's go to our next feature of garment used in seaweed. We also have, we also have, oh, the shoulder part is being displayed. That different form of the shoulder pad. The other one is there. We also have this one. This is to tell you where we insert the shoulder pad. That is on the shoulder pad, on the shoulder pad. Okay. We also have our zippers. The zip, as we used to say, we also have our zippers. We have different, different types of zippers. This is another form of the silver, uh, zipper that you can see. But you have the one with thin zip. This is abandoned grace. To see that one. Okay. So these are some of the features of garment that we can insert into our sleeve when making a garment, when making a garment. So we are going to end here for today. This, the question, we try some, how to insert the sleeve, how to cut it before, how to insert, and the guidelines to guide you before you can take any measurement on a person before a dressmaker can sew a dress for someone. There are some guidelines or points to consider so the points that we listed you should bear in mind when taking measurement on someone okay so we end here for today but if you enjoy the lesson 
tell your friend to also keep watching AGPS TV to get the best on home economics aspect, food and the clothing aspect. Tell your friend to also subscribe and keep watching. We are going to bring our best to you, both food and then the clothing aspect. See you on our next lesson. Bye-bye. Abandoned Grace International School, we are located right in Obwase, precisely BDM. The school has a number of facilities that aid in learning. We have qualified and trained teachers who are ready and willing to assist the children. The school has many facilities such as the ICT laboratory. We also have a science laboratory. We also have a library. The school has a number of buses which convey the children from their various destinations to the school premises. We have the football team. We have the drama group. We have a lot. And the school is based on the Christian principles. For more inquiries, you can call this number 0541-310-901-0541-670772. Abandon grace in God we trust.